Hey everyone, my name is Justin Donaldson, and today we're going to paint some anime backgrounds. Yay! So, the very first thing we're going to do is grab this piece. This piece is from the film Only Yesterday. We're going to grab this piece, pull it apart, see what makes it work as a painting, and put it back together again. Then, we're going to use the ideas that we've learnt from this piece and create a whole new piece. Uh, Rivendell from Lord of the Rings. It's going to be really good. So you ready? Let's paint. When it comes to painting anime backgrounds like this one, we use a medium called poster color. Now, if you don't have poster color near you, if you don't have access to it, that's okay. Don't get too hung up on that. We can actually use gouache. Gouache and poster color are opaque water media. What that means is that if you put it down thick enough, you start covering over what's below it, kind of like using oil paints. And so we get this ability to be able to, to get some really watercolor kind of looks by adding a lot of water in and at the same time uh, getting a lot more of that sort of opaque classic art kind of idea by laying it on thick and we have everything in between for us so it actually has a, a lot of capacity for great detail um, not that detail is always the best thing you see but uh, it really gives us a lot of room to breathe when it comes to you know just deciding how it is we want to paint and what we want to paint and making large areas of paint happen really quick, which is really, really nice. When it comes to producing stuff like this uh, for film or for games, you really want to be able to do it relatively quickly. And so because this stuff dries with the water, uh, you can do layer upon layer upon layer all in the same day, which is really, really helpful. Or you can find a way to actually make it stay wet and workable for hours. Ah, that was really fun. So what did we learn? Three main ideas uh, to pull out of a hat of a lot of ideas in there was one, that we actually used a lot of water to begin with. Those first layers were like uh, swimming in watercolor. And then as the painting moves forward, as it dries and you put more layers on, those layers become thicker and thicker and thicker, mostly actually towards the front of the painting to really communicate that like tangible quality for things that are close by. The second thing is we made really big groups of trees. If, if you were to like sit there in that actual place, the, there wouldn't be such clear lines of how these trees are going, these clear groups of everything. It's really confusing in person, but they've clarified things to make the whole painting read a lot easier. And then finally, to do the same thing, they put a lot of detail in the things that are like close up, and then the things that are far away, it, it, there's, you know, just a little brushstroke, a little, a little thing, thing, thing. So what we're going to do is take those ideas to the next painting. Let's go. So actually gonna try and bring these ideas in, right? Try to get this, this first layer really wet. Lots and lots of water. Just to get everything to meld together, to merge together, to be that kind of soft feeling that it's really hard to get when we're dealing with gouache. And so if we can think about all of those transitions, all of those times where everything's gonna be soft and melted together, and just focus in on getting those done early on, then we can come back on later with the more opaque paint, with the thicker paint, with the stuff that's gonna have harder edges and more definition. And that just gives us a lot of opportunity for um, a variety of edge qualities, a variety of transitions between shapes and ideas. So that's really cool. We use this process to give ourselves just more breathing room. 
And here you can see we're actually coming on top with that thicker paint with a lot more uh, detail, a lot more fun stuff that you can you can really give your eyes a place to to give attention to to rest on to you know play around in the painting. We've grouped a lot of these trees together that, so they have a hierarchy, kind of a, a very clear sense of what is in front of what. And that gives us a lot of depth, a lot of uh, being able to just to kind of move around the painting without getting too confused by all the crazy, crazy details that really could have been in there. And obviously have a look at the whole painting. The stuff that's in the background, it's really vague and wet and loose. And the stuff that's in the foreground starts to have a lot more detail. It's kind of everything in between to really help us get that feeling of, you know, things that are lost in the background, thus things that are really present in the foreground. And we have the ability to come on top of this paint, right? I only painted it just a little while ago. I can already uh, paint on top and get these different layers and the good news is, if I don't like what I do, which, you know, that happens relatively often, I can come and paint on top of it. Or I can re-wet it and rework it and make things uh, nice and effective just the way I want them. Here we go, we're finishing up the end, kind of come into a place where I'm kind of really liking what's going on here. And here it is, Rivendell. All right guys, thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you want the full version of this video with all of the thoughts, with exercises to practice, with a whole community behind you to learn how to paint awesome anime backgrounds or even just, you know, landscape paintings, then come ahead and go to the link below and join my Patreon. We've got an anime background study group and we have some amazing people in there so far. And I'm really looking forward to you being there. So I will see you there. And until next time, see you later.